Thank you for that introduction, uh, Professor Sonnenschein. Uh, Sonnenschein, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is, uh, I asked you earlier. Uh, how, how you pronounce I'm your used to name? it. Don't worry about it. Um, Anyways, as uh, Professor Sonnenschein pointed out, um, I've been polling the Latino electorate for a long time, for over two decades, and it's always exciting when you look at the data because Latinos have a way of surprising you. Uh, the diversity of the Hispanic population is very real, uh, and so it's nice to see uh, Latino attitudes, behaviors, and acro across a wide range of politics, political issues, uh, that have impact California and impact Los Angeles. So today I'm going to share with you the results of this uh, survey. All right. And California is home to the largest number of Latinos in the country, 15 million Latinos, or about 40% of the state's population. About 4.9 million Latinos reside in LA County. That's close to half of the population of LA County. LA County has the largest concentration. Uh, it's the county with the largest numbers of Latinos uh, in the nation. Uh, the second largest is Harris County in Texas, which has 1.7 million Latinos. So you can see the large differences, 1.7 million and 4.9 million Latinos in LA. Looking at Latino voter registration numbers, we've seen an increase. Make sure to speak into where your microphone okay. is. Okay. Uh, we've seen, I, I can see, hear the echoes. We've seen an inc a dramatic increase in the number of Latinos registering to vote. And so it's no exaggeration for me to say that if you're dealing with LA politics, essentially you're talking about Latino politics. If you're talking about Latino politics in Los Angeles, essentially you're dealing with LA, broader LA politics. The two are closely intertwined. As Dr. Sonnenschein pointed out, uh, the future of LA, uh, the politics, uh, in many ways, uh, is closely aligned with the Latino electorate. The survey. We have a sample of 1,500 Latinos, uh, Latino registered voters in Los Angeles. 600 in the city of Los Angeles and about 900 outside of the city of Los Angeles. The field dates were October 4th to the 20th, 2016. One of the things that stands, uh, that makes Latino decisions unique among polling agencies is that we conduct our surveys both in Spanish and English of the Latino electorate. That may not, that may seem uh, pretty obvious when you're studying the Latino population, but you would be shocked to discover how many polls, how many studies on the Latino population, on the Latino electorate are largely carried out with English-speaking Latinos. Uh, and so we have both English, Spanish-speaking Latinos. Our survey interviewers are both are bilingual. And so during the, uh, the uh, administration of the survey, we can easily transition from English to Spanish uh, to administer the survey. We use a variety of approaches, uh, cell phone line, landline, or email and the data are weighted to match the demographic profile of Latino voters in LA County. Latinos, as I pointed out, are diverse. There's variations that you're going to see in the survey by age, variations by income, variations by education, language, gender, religiosity, and nativity. And so, while it is often that we talk about the Latino electorate, Latino public opinion, keep in mind the diversity of the population, and we're going to see some of that diversity uh, in the slides. First off, let's talk about civic engagement. Uh, we asked Latinos if they engage in any of these activities at any point, uh, and we wanted to look at uh, behaviors beyond voting. We will get to some of the slides related to voting, but these are behaviors beyond, beyond voting. What are the most common political behaviors or civic activities that we see by 75% is, is that they engage in discussions of politics with friends and family. Very critical, uh, these conversations are taking place. Uh, some of the variations that's not reported right here, you'll see uh, immigrants in particular, foreign-born populations, uh, much you know, engaged in, in high frequency in those discussions, given the context of this election. Other types of uh, common types of political activities, uh, attending PTA meetings, uh, posting on social media, signing petitions, attending uh, the first got cut off, attending a community or neighborhood meeting, 
and the bottom got cut off here, but attending a public meeting or hearing by a government agency. So we see variations in, in, in different types of civic activities. The takeaway here, not to go through each one of those data points, is that we have a Latino population that is actively engaged in the politics and the life of Los Angeles. Media. Where do Latinos obtain their information? The most common source is television, uh, followed by the internet. But when we look at differences between native-born and foreign-born, we see that among the foreign-born, the greatest source of information, political information through the media comes from television, 59%. For native-born Latinos, it's equally, uh, they obtain political content through television and the internet. Media sources by, uh, politi by age. In terms of the, uh, the millennials, uh, we know that 40% of the Latino electorate are in the category of millennials. Where do millennials obtain their political information? They largely obtain it from the internet, uh, and it's equally split, uh, slightly leaning more toward the internet and television, whereas the older you get, you're more likely to rely on uh, television for your sources of uh, political information. Important information if you're a political candidate, civic organization trying to reach out the, the uh, Latino voters, it depends on what segment of the Latino population you want to reach out. If you want to reach out millennials, you're probably not going to do it through television. It's probably not going to be as effective as if you do it through the internet. All right, what are the top issues facing the Hispanic Latino population in Los Angeles? Number one, immigration issues equally tied with economic issues, unemployment, jobs, and the economy. In the context of this election, uh, it is not surprising that a large percentage of Latinos, uh, the third issue listed, is discrimination and race relations. So the tone of this election has certainly impacted <coughs> Latinos in Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. Other issues commonly associated with Latinos, school, uh, issues associated with safety and cost of living are also, uh, there are many issues that are listed. You'll see those in the top lines in the cross tabs. These are just listing the top five issues. But the issues vary by subgroups. Um, if you look at uh, millennials immigration scores uh, as the uh, top ranking issue, if you're looking at older Latinos, you have economic issues. Um, and you see variations as well between uh, men and women. Uh, women more likely to score immigration as a high issue. For men, it's going to be economic issues. Now, one of the things you will notice here is that you will say, well, wait a minute. I thought immigration should be pretty high among Spanish and the foreign-born segment. Why is that uh, uh, not scored as the number one issue? A couple of reasons for that. The first one is the immigrant population that we're interviewing here these are all U.S. citizens. These are registered voters. So these are individuals that are not in a limbo situation or a, or a precarious situation when it comes to their immigration status. Um, so, so that's uh, not an issue that, that is directly impacting them. Um, secondly, um, I believe that they're the ones that are scoring discrimination really high. So for me, what that's also capturing is, is attitudes toward immigrants. So when you ask someone, you know, what is the biggest issue facing the Hispanic Latino population, for the foreign-born immigrant segment, they're saying discrimination. Discrimination against whom? Well, discrimination against Hispanics, largely in the context of this election, we're looking at discrimination directed at, at, at immigrants. So uh, for me, I would, I would probably fold in discrimination and immigration as, as, as uh, as top issues for, for the, uh, the immigrant population or, or, or discrimination is, is, is in the minds of, of the foreign-born population largely equated with immigrant issues, discrimination against immigrants. That first question was, again, general, uh, the biggest issues facing Latinos, Hispanics. Um, we ask, what about discrimination? Have you experienced discrimination? So this is the uh, percentage who say they have not experienced discrimination. Interestingly, it's pretty low among the foreign born. It's pretty low among Spanish speakers. And so again, on the one hand, that first slide says the biggest issue is discrimination. 
But then when we ask immigrants, have you experienced discrimination? They say no. You're like, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the difference? What? And again, it has to do with the way the question is worded. The first question when we ask about the biggest issues facing Latinos, Hispanics, immigrants are thinking about the broader context, they're thinking about the discrimination, they're thinking about the, the campaign, the rhetoric that is being levied against immigrants. But when you ask them, have you yourself experienced discrimination, what's interesting here, and this is not surprising for, uh, for those of us who have been doing social science for a long time, when you look at actual experiences with discrimination, as your English abilities go up, you're more likely to di report discrimination. As you become as a uh, second generation, US born, third generation, you're more likely to report discrimination. Some people look a little puzzled. Now why might that be the case? Social science, scientists would essentially say, when you come in greater contact with outgroups, the opportunity to experience discrimination is heightened. And so for second generation English speakers, your interactions, economic mobility, educational mobility, your interactions are going to largely occur or, or are going to increasingly occur with non-Hispanics, non-Latinos. And so it's those interactions that increase the opportunity to face some kind of discrimination, some kind of hostility. When you're largely living in, in, in an isolated area, uh, or largely uh, 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 interacting with other Latinos, Hispanics, again, you're less likely to report discrimination. So that's not uh, surprising. We have a presidential election, but we have other important elections going on simultaneously. In this case, we have a Senate election, uh, the race between the two Democrats, Loretta Sanchez, Kamala Harris, 50% of Latinos intend to vote for Loretta Sanchez. When we look at the breakdown between uh, those, uh, between education rates, nativity, language, income, we see that those with less than the high school education more likely to support uh, Sanchez. Um, immigrants more likely to support Sanchez. Uh, individuals who uh, uh, are, are Spanish dominant more likely to support Sanchez lower income, more likely to support Sanchez. But it's not all bad news for Kamala Harris, by the way. Let, let, let me just point that out, because here we have um, what we call feeling thermometers. And these are rankings of zero to 100. The, 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 the closer you get to 100, the warmer your feelings are toward those individuals. The closer you get to zero, the colder your feelings are toward those individuals. So, uh, Barack Obama, very high ratings, followed by Hillary Clinton. Again, you hear a lot of discussion about the negatives that Hillary Clinton, she's the lesser of two people. Well, not among Latinos. Latinos have, have high favorability toward uh, or high score of Hillary Clinton very highly. Um, so the others score very well as, uh, as well, like Loretta Sanchez and Kamala Harris. Again, the, the scoring is, is, is pretty close to, to uh, Loretta Sanchez's scoring. Eric Garcetti, Jerry Brown scored very well. Uh, and of course, who, uh, in, in terms of the race to the bottom, so to speak, uh, the winner uh, in, is Donald Trump with a, with a, a mean level rating of 22.6. But it varies. It varies between immigrants and non-immigrants. Overall, it's the native-born, it's the foreign-born population, the immigrant population, that scores these individuals much higher. Now, at first glance, you might say, well, maybe they're just giving us socially desirable answers. You know, they may not know these individuals, so, so their inclination is to score them uh, much, much higher. No, they know these individuals. All of them score much higher, except for, again, going back to the race to the bottom, Donald Trump. There, you, you switch it out. It's the foreign-born population that scores them much lower than the native-born population. So immigrants are paying attention to politics. They know who these individuals are. Uh, they know who they like, and they clearly know who they dislike. All right, likelihood of voting. So we talked previously about civic engagement. Uh, what about voting? Is this population engaged in electoral politics? They may be registered to vote, but are they going to turn out? Yes. 71% uh, tell us absolutes uh, certainly they will turn out. 16%, uh, so here we're looking at um, about 87% 80, who, are, who are very likely to turn out. Uh, in terms of not, not, you know, individuals that are sitting out this election, you know, 4%, very small. So you have a population that is planning to turn out in this election, planning to turn out in large numbers in this election. 
But again, there's variations in voter turnout. Um, not surprising, and this is something that plagues other communities, but this is particularly problematic for Latinos. Uh, the millennial segment, uh, less likely to report that they are almost certain that they are gonna turn out and vote. It's still pretty high, but again, not as high as individuals uh, in higher uh, age categories. Um, good news, Spanish speakers more likely to uh, say they're going to turn out. Uh, women, in particular, when you look at the gender gap, something we, we, you know, we, we haven't explored in great detail, but Latinas in particular, highly engaged in politics, very likely to indicate they're going to turn out and vote. Um, and of course here we have uh, differences between homeowners and renters, uh, individuals that are homeowners, uh, largely captures some kind of an, uh, an income status, are more likely to, to turn out and vote. Presidential vote choice, um, strongly skewed in favor, very, essentially Latinos are, are gonna turn out in large numbers and are gonna turn out in large numbers for Hillary Clinton. Um, in all of the polling we've done in our collective years, we have not seen poll numbers this low for a Republican candidate. Uh, Donald Trump is essentially uh, crashing and burning among the Latino electorate. Um, I'll, I'll stop there uh, <laughs> with, 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 with a colorful language. But uh, he's going to get somewhere in the teens. Uh, we thought the low point was with uh, Mitt Romney or Bob Dole, somewhere in the lower 20, 23 percent, 24 percent of the, of the Latino vote. Um, Donald Trump will, will uh, surpass them in, in coming, coming in last place with somewhere in the teens. Oops, sorry. Vote choice for Hillary Clinton. Immigrants, very enthusiastic for Hillary Clinton. Uh, Spanish dominant uh, Latinos, very enthusiastic for Hillary Clinton. So again, we have a Latino population, highly engaged. Immigrants, particularly engaged. And immigrants, strongly favorable toward Hillary Clinton. All right, let's look at some policy issues. Just general attitudes toward, toward taxes and the role of government. Uh, there's often that expression that Latinos are conservative, they just don't know it. Well, when it comes to taxes, uh, no, Latinos are willing to pay, 56% say they will pay higher taxes to obtain more services. We saw very little differences in that support across the other demographic categories. The only difference is bipartisanship. Not surprisingly, Democrats uh, Latinos that are self-identified as Democrat are more likely to favor uh, paying higher taxes to obtain uh, greater services. Latinos that self-identify, and it's a very small number, by the way, in Los Angeles, Latinos that self-identify as Republican, uh, less likely to be supportive of paying higher taxes. Same-sex marriage, Latinos, again, this idea that uh, Latinos are very conservative, very religious, therefore they're going to be pretty conservative on, on the values issues. Well, we don't see that. Uh, we haven't seen that in other polls. We don't see that in this poll. Uh, when it comes to same-sex marriage, 66% very supportive of same-sex marriage. Not surprisingly, young people are most supportive. So the younger you are, uh, younger generations of Latinos, very supportive of same-sex marriage. Um, some differences between Spanish and English speakers, nativity, uh, college-educated Latinos, uh, in, in the expected direction uh, with, with those uh, that are U.S.-born, college-educated, um, are, are much more supportive of same-sex marriage. Very similar patterns that we observe when it comes to the issue of abortion. Uh, again, Latinos, uh, for the most part, uh, in terms of the strong position made illegal without any exceptions, uh, you know, very little support for that, for that position. Uh, Latinos uh, are, are, are skew more toward uh, having some, some uh, options available. But again, we see differences uh, between uh, nativity, differences uh, in terms of younger Latinos uh, being much more supportive. Uh, college-educated Latinos being much more supportive. And here's where the Catholicism uh, does, does come into play. Uh, Self-identified Catholic Latinos, uh, much more supportive of, of restrictions than the non-Catholics. Immigration remains a top issue. We ask Latinos 
uh, essentially what should happen to those. And again, these are, keep in mind the immigrant population, these are all citizens, okay? So we're asking uh, immigrants who are U.S. citizens, but also non-immigrants, non these are all uh, U.S. citizens, you know, what should happen to individuals that are undocumented? Uh, should they have a chance to remain here or should they, you know, the Donald Trump uh, policy be returned to their countries? Uh, overwhelming support, 81% say uh, a chance to remain here. And here, it's the immigrant population, uh, Spanish dominant, uh, Democrats, very supportive of that proposition. Latinos who follow uh, Spanish language media, very, very supportive of the proposition that immigrants should have a chance to stay. We have some initiatives coming up. It's not all Hillary versus Trump. Uh, Proposition 64, recreational marijuana. Where are Latinos on this issue? Latinos are, are leaning toward uh, favoring and supporting the initiative, 53% to 42%. Um, English uh, dominant Latinos, uh, men, uh, uh, young Latinos in particular, uh, very supportive of uh, Proposition 64. Bilingual education, very supportive. 62% plan to vote for in favor of Proposition 58. Not surprisingly, Spanish dominant Latinos, uh, younger Latinos, very supportive of bilingual education, the reintroduction of bilingual education. Measure A, tax to fund open spaces, um, increased taxes for, for uh, public parks. We see strong support in that regard. Um, Younger people, college educated people, people with higher incomes are much more supportive of that measure. Measure M, public transportation requires two thirds approval. This is, uh, if you're thinking in terms of the uh, future for uh, public transportation projects in California, in Los Angeles, this, this is it. Um, uh, and so we're looking at uh, Latinos strongly support, 71% uh, are, are supportive of Measure M. Uh, what's interesting here is that it's the immigrant population, those that carried out the, the survey in Spanish, those that uh, follow Spanish language media, uh, immigrants, foreign born population, that are very supportive of Measure M. So Measure M strongly winning among Latinos, uh, and in particular winning among Latino immigrants. So that's something we could talk more about in the Q&A. We see some, some gender differences uh, in support for, for Measure M, uh, but again, the gaps are not, not uh, terribly large. High-speed rail, Latinos very supportive of high-speed rail overall, um, but when it comes to the highest level of support, as your education rates go up, your support for high-speed rail simultaneously goes up. Um, as your income levels go up, your support for high-speed rail goes up. And so strongly supportive overall, but again, uh, higher educated Latinos, higher income Latinos, much more supportive of high-speed rail. Finally, let's just start wrapping things up. Uh, we're seeing a community in motion. Uh, when we look at Latinos across the generations, we see some differences. We see in terms of their, their uh, political ideology, young Latinos saying they are very liberal. Uh, when we look at, uh, uh, for example, the use of the internet, young Latinos again using the internet. Also, uh, uh, we see a rise in secularism among young Latinos. When we look at religious services, uh, again, we're, we talk about, uh, we often equate the Latino population as being very religious. Well, we see that across generations, across ages, uh, secularism incre increases. So we have 36% that say uh, they almost never, almost never or never attend religious services. In terms of the likelihood of voting, uh, again, this is something that continues to plague the Latino population. We have to improve our numbers among young people. 64% uh, are almost certain to vote. Clinton approval ratings, uh, a little bit lower among younger people. Um, when it comes to uh, support for same-sex marriage, uh, much more liberal, abortion always legal, marijuana, Measure M, uh, much more supportive, uh, and, well, equally supportive on Measure M as, as the, other, the other individuals.